Great pleasure to welcome back on the show radio host, author, and I think one of the, the sanest voices in North America, Dennis Prager, joins us from, I think it's Los Angeles or somewhere godless like that. How are that, you, Dennis? That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> Thank you. And, and one of the many reasons I return is just to hear these beautiful accolades from you. Thank you. Well, it's a great, great pleasure. There are so many issues we can discuss. You sent down a few, and you realize there's so yeah. much going wrong in the world. There's much that is right, but so much that's going wrong. The issue of, um, of gender much. identity and, and transgenderism, I want to make it quite clear. This is not uh, in any way lacking in compassion. People who are confused need counseling and help. And it's not even about homosexuality. It's about Correct. people who are told they're in the wrong body. We're having problems in this country, and particular problems in, uh, what a surprise, Massachusetts as well. Well, it's actually part of a much, much larger issue that is being entirely ignored because people understandably have compassion for people who are confused with regard to gender identity. And what that means, uh, let's define it, is they, they do not believe that they are the gender or sex of their genitalia. Yeah. That, that's, that, to put it as bluntly and as clearly as possible, that's the problem. So you could have uh, male genitals, but you uh, say, I in fact uh, believe that I am a woman or a girl, uh, depending on your age. Uh, in uh, what's happening, though, is much broader than that. That's a very, very, very tiny sliver of humanity. What is happening and is much larger is that there is a war against the notion of male and female. In Sweden, increasingly, for example, and this is from the Swedish press, increasingly there are schools and parents who are raising children with no gender identity. Yeah. They're not given a boy's name or a girl's name. When they're referred to, they're not referred to as he or she. They use some other pronoun because of the belief that gender doesn't matter and it's completely fluid. So we're not talking about a tiny sliver of humanity that is gender confused. We're talking about a war against gender distinction. Look, do you know that uh, I was told to sign up for Google Plus? So I went to sign up, and uh, it said uh, gender, and it had M, F, and O, other. And that's how ubiquitous it's becoming. Yeah. Now, we now, tend... Now, if you want, you want me to tell you about... Yeah, go on. Well, yeah, I'm just going to say, we, we the... tend to face the problems before you do. I mean, as bad as maybe L.A. and parts of Massachusetts may be, we, we've had this <laughs> problem in Ontario where... At the age of three, four, and five, children are told that there are half a dozen different genders. And if they are in any way confused, and a lot of kids are confused, they want to be Batman half the time. It doesn't mean they're a bat. But if they show any sort of ambivalence, they're almost encouraged and empowered to say they're in the wrong gender. That's right. That, as if it is a form of oppression uh, to actually raise a boy with any masculine uh, traits, characteristics, toys, etc. Look, it started with feminism which announced Shulamith Firestone was one of the luminous names of feminism. And she wrote, it is our desire, I'm paraphrasing, mm. our desire as feminists to ultimately see the end of gender identity. And so, for example, it started with, oh, don't give boys uh, uh, trucks, give them dolls. Don't give girls dolls, give them trucks. The president of Harvard, Larry Summers, announced a number of years ago that he actually believed that. And so he gave his daughter, I don't know if it was Christmas or whatever, he gave her a gift of trucks. And uh, sure enough, he found out that she was raising them. One truck was a daddy yeah. truck and <laughs> one truck was a baby truck. <laughs> It, it, it's wonderful. The way, yeah. it, it, it's, it's like after a, uh, a volcano, how quickly uh, wildlife, uh, nature, flowers, plants, weeds grow through the cracks. It always comes back. Even though you try to suppress what is natural in, in, in little babies, in children, reality yeah. and natural law will always right. emerge. Well, you're a little more optimistic than I. I think that that's true in the case of most children. I think that this war against gender identity is going to have some dangerous consequences, and I can't even fully identify all of them. I just know that it's not a healthy trend. When men are no longer masculine, uh, and I think that that's a trend uh, certainly in my society in the United States, where in, when I was a boy, to define manhood, it was simple. Mm. You took care of a family. 
That is no longer the case. And what is happening is women aren't finding husbands. Uh, I just, ironically, my, on my own uh, national radio show today, I covered this issue of the number of men in America 30 to 49 years of age living with their parents uh, and playing video games. When men aren't given masculine roles, they, they sort of become vegetables. And women want men. With all the yelling that feminism has done about machismo and so on, most women want masculine men and most men want feminine women. So this is, it's not a problem that is solving itself. Mm. There was a, a case recently where, and I'm sure you, you, you covered this on your show or know about it, it happened in the United States, where a, a, little, a little boy apparently rejected, uh, I suppose, cliche, a, a cliched masculine toys. Big deal, doesn't matter particularly. Um, liked pink instead of blue. The, 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 the parents have raised this little boy as a girl since then. They're now suing the high school, or the school, because the school said, well, the genitalia are quite obvious. It, it, it's a boy. We can't allow him to use the girl's washroom. This seems to me abundantly clear. This is child abuse. Yet, if anything, media was on the side of the parents. That's right. I, I think it's a form of child abuse. So the boy wants pink. So what? That, yeah. doesn't, that doesn't make him a girl. Well, that's what I'm saying. Look, uh, as I've, all, I've been saying now for a number of years since watching my children grow up, we are 100% the products of nurture and 100% the products of nature. Mm. That's how powerful each is. So don't, don't discount what culture can do to people. Look, I'll, I'll give you an example that, uh, that is not exactly related, but related enough. We are often told by a spokesman for gay liberation and so on that, that orientation and sexuality are fixed. But we know that in women that's not true. In some women it is fixed, but in many women it's not. I had a woman on from McGill University, in fact. Mm. Uh, she wrote a column for the McGill paper in which she said that she had come to university certain that she was heterosexual. She only cared about boys in any sexual manner. But then, after taking women's studies courses and watching uh, uh, The L Word, I think that was the television yes. show that glorified <laughs> le beautiful lesbians, she said, I realized I came into university heterosexist. I was biased. And so I've opened myself up, and now I am with women sexually, and I'm a bisexual. This can happen and is happening with a lot of women. Men are more fixed. It's hard to convince a man to be attracted sexually to men. Uh, hard is actually a, a, a euphemism for impossible. Yes, yes. Exactly. Or close to impossible. <laughs> but it's not true for women. Women's sexuality is far more elastic. Yeah. And so uh, we're playing around with fire. Yeah. Yes, we are. Wish we had more time. We, well, we must have you back on the show. I'd like to do every, every three or four weeks if we can. It's a joy to listen I, to you. I always enjoy it. Thank I, you. I do. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, my friend. Really appreciate it.